Okay, for those of you that are watching this, on 6 p.m. Eastern Time, I'm going to make a Justin TV broadcast and in my JTV account of the same name as this one. It's Mr. Wonka 7. You can feel free to join the chat room. It's really a chat heavy show. I'm just going to chill, do my thing, and if someone is writing something in the chat box, I'll fucking respond, I'll speak, I'll tell stories, I'll do whatever you want. It, it's just, do you want to have a conversation with me? If you don't, then this is entirely worthless. But if you are interested, and I know a lot of people do like the Mr. Wonka 7 persona, they like my ability to tell stories, to rant, to do all these kinds of things, here's your opportunity. I'll probably go live, I don't know how long I'll be there, if it's active continuously, there's at least one person there that's actively speaking to me, then I'll be there for a while. Last long JTP broadcast upon my return was a 10 hour broadcast. I got two followers out of it, maybe three. I lost one, big deal. The point was, I had fun with it, it was entertaining, I got to do a lot of stuff and speak a lot of about a lot of things I don't speak about here in Mishawaka 7, and a lot of things that I do speak about here. It is essentially a one-man show, it's just gonna be me on the camera. For those of you who don't understand how JTV works, it's kind of like Ustream or the late Blog TV, except Blog TV, you, you could co-host. There was like a little screen that you could grow for another person, just one more person. But no, it's not like Tiny Chat where it's just a bunch of heads having a conversation in one road. Well, not road, whatever. But yeah, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. if you're in the West Coast. If you're a European person and you want to see me, you can see me. I don't know what time that'll be, but there you go what times it doesn't matter a lot of time zones it's gonna be fun at least I hope it is it all depends on how active the chat room is and if you like hearing me speak and you want to communicate with me then there have a conversation with me chat with me I sound like this is gonna be an erotic phone call conversation but no it's nothing like that at least I hope it isn't. I want to talk about rustling, since in terms of politics, there's so many ways to rustle a person. And it just seems like rustling is an art that doesn't just depend on one thing. We all know that retarded 14-year-old vegetarian that just has... Uh... Nazi cover photo and profile picture, and he makes blaspheming his Facebook status every single time. And the people who actually get offended by him, I hope not. I mean, he's a dying species ever since the late great MySpace fell apart, but you see people like that all the fucking time, right? Okay, fucking see that. God damn it. But there are multiple areas of wrestling people, or multiple ways, or multiple variables actually. That's the perfect word, variable. The first variable is what you're saying. Now there are certain topics that will annoy people no matter what 
for example, for an end cap, this is a good example. If you say, what about the roads, or what about said institution, or function, they're going to get annoyed because they already have this marketarian answer and they don't want to deal with the same unnuanced arguments against it. And it's actually funny because it's become a meme. Now anybody could say this and it annoyed a person. You don't have to be of a specific kind of thought. It's just that unnuanced arguments do annoy them. Libertarians of the ANCAP or anti-statist divide or even the voluntarist divide. That's a good example of just how the what, the what are you saying can rustle somebody. Or of course if you talk to maybe a Jew with feels, you say, the Holocaust never happened. It doesn't matter who you are. That's going to trigger them. I mean, I know this one guy that he basically, he, he's a Jewish friend of mine, and he wrote about how Israel was harvesting organs. And a lot of his friends from his old Westchester Judaic high school were all pissed. They were all just saying, fuck you, you stupid moron. They're just ranting. Sorry, my dick is itchy. The second variable is who you are when you say that. I mean, sometimes who you are plays a bigger role. And this doesn't just go for a political opinions. I mean, the obvious one would be if you're a male and you talk about rape. You can't do that or childbirth or something like that. For a feminist, they might say, oh, you don't, that, that's not about you. You don't talk about that. And of course, these people are stupid, so they really love their fallacies. But another thing is, if you're just out of political perspective for a second, if you're not black, and you use the word nigga. This is a problem for us Spanish guys. And that's a very variety. There's indigo, mestizo, or castizo. Castizo. Which would probably apply to me a lot better than all of them. Because we say nigga a lot. And there's no way around it. We're going to say it. In fact, we've incorporated it into our own slang, which just further complicates things. So, that'll rustle a lot of black people. And with the Wigger community, they're going to say nigga. It's just way too easy to say that word now, but it's going to rustle some insecure blacks, just mentally confused, maybe not even full dark, just mulatto maybe, especially mulatto, they might take offense to that, or heavily Americanized ones. And the third variable, going past what you're saying, and who you are when you say it, Actually, going to the second part, I know when I dissed white nationalism, like some of my peers, they didn't have the same sort of reaction I got because, with me, there's the question of my genes, and they're thinking, oh wow, this guy, this guy is just saying that because he may not be white, in my opinion, or the opinion of, let's say, said institution. So there was that kind of reaction. But the third one, and I'm not going to say the person you're saying it to, because well, that plays a role in the first and second, too. So it'd probably be how you're saying it. 
because honestly, the best way to piss someone off isn't just what you say and who you are when you say it. It's just how you say it. I mean, you could coddle and rant and nag about the viewpoints, and it would get anybody pissed off. Or you can be an ultra snarky liberal, be smart, mean, condescending about it, and anybody would be rustled by it, no matter how many times they've heard it or how many times they've become desensitized by it. The right tone will always make anything Russell friendly. There's also the smugness. Some people are very smug when they present their views. They have a conceited way of saying it. They have the shit eating grin. They're delivering it with this nasty sarcasm. And that'll piss just about anybody off. And the lesser people won't understand why. Hey, why is he getting to you? What the fuck? Tone is very important. Tone makes a difference. So anyway, this is Mr. Wonka 7. I'm going to get ready for the broadcast. It's 28 minutes away right now. Feel free to get a JTV account because you're going to need it to join the chat room. It's not like blog TV where you can just go on as a guest and chat with me. It's relatively unwatchable and unenjoyable if you don't have an account. Because you're just going to see me mind my own business. Or hopefully just talk to other people and ignore your stupid ass. If you're not smart enough to get an account and actually chat with me first. The link is going to be in the description. <sighs> If you're annoyed by what I said and I did rustle you, then you can freely just cut my ass. Come in and cut my ass. I like all my YouTube fans. I like all the people that subscribe to me. You're all cool to me in varying degrees. I'm not going to say that I'll die for all of you. Some of you, I'll just, I won't even bother saving if we come to a life or death situation, not worth it, too lazy, short time preferences, whatever. It's Mr. Wonka 7 and suck my dick.